Hello everyone, this is Man and it is here. Welcome to what's effectively going to be the part 2 of a bit of a video catch-up series where we're going to take the next item on this list in order to do a quick bit of review for it. Uh, namely the Demoniacal Fit Ultimate Time Ranger figure, which as you can kind of guess is Mad Marco's answer to the what if of Super Saiyan 4 Vegito based on none of the official sources, mind you, none of the Dragon Ball Z, GT, or Super, but rather one of those kind of side Xenoverse games. I think it's either Dragon Ball Heroes, Dragon Ball Super Heroes, whatever you want to call it. It's that one that also had a little bit of promotional anime to it that also brought us a bunch of uh, interesting little side things or extra transformations that don't exist in any actual canon, but still look neat, so hey, why not they decide to make some figures out of it? As we can kind of see, this what-if version of Vegito stands at about a little under six and a half inches tall, so about kind of standard height, I'd say, for the regular figures, and is kind of a bit of a combination of some unique sculpt stuff as well as some pre-existing stuff, like the head and pants and a few other odds and bits and ends that have been modified. Uh, unfortunately, as uh, it tends to go with some of the more original sculpts from Demon Echo Fit, uh, in terms of the build quality, those tend to become a little more hit or miss. Uh, namely, moving away from the head, which has a little bit of reduced motion, but still is somewhat functional. As soon as I go to the arms, I can't help but notice that, unfortunately you can't hear it in the current audio because it's just my voice over here, you'd be hearing a very loud squeak otherwise, as the shoulders, especially around the biceps, are incredibly tight. I'd say to the point that they actually remind me a lot of the official Bardock and Jiren releases back in the day, which, as you might know for if you have to collect this line a lot, is not exactly an endearing term. That means that they're effectively tight to the point that I'm actually afraid that if you put too much motion or pull on it, you'll end up breaking something, which is not a good thing. Uh, in terms of the ab crunch, you don't have a lot of back movement. It's actually quite limited due to the uh, sculpting motion musculature, and the front movement is not exactly that great either. It's a bit limited. Uh, side torso movement is just fine. The legs, you can't do a real good split on them, I'm afraid, because, well, the cloak or pants, whatever you want to get, they kind of get in the way, so at least it kind of makes sense why that doesn't work. But in terms of the forward and back motion, at least I can say that's pretty functional. All the leg joints themselves are quite tight, with the exception, I would have to say, of the ankles. Unfortunately, the ankles are actually surprisingly loose on this figure, as you can see how easily those rotate on there. Uh, tie, uh, not tie, uh, the toe joints are just functional though, I should just mention though. But the ankles, unfortunately, actually make this particular release, or this particular figure I have here, rather problematic in order to actually get standing, because due to them not being tight at all, they're almost super... They're actually, no, I would dare say they're actually as bad as the Super Saiyan 4 Goku release, I'd say. He, this figure tends to uh, fall down all the time. Uh, as you can kind of see there, the tail also has a bit of a limited articulation issue, namely, it's just a ball peg that just pops in, and you can spin it around, but that's about it. Uh, and he's going to try to see me getting this thing standing for camera. Yeah, we're not having a good time here. Once I did get back standing up here, here's some of the more immediate comparisons. As you can kind of see, you have the Vegeta Blue. This is the official figure on the left here, and the Kong version of the same form of Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta on the right. And now, in terms of general height, the kind of the common agreement, or at least mostly agreement, say, it seems to be that the Super Saiyan form version should be a little bit taller, which the Kong version definitely is, but uh, I'd have to say, in this case, the current figure, the Demon Nickel Fit one, tends to be about the same height as the standard one, uh, maybe with a little bit more musculature, but otherwise, it's roughly the same build for the most part. Uh, the actual musculature itself, especially in the sculpted chest and stuff, well, you can see the chest is a lot more puffed out on this one, and the back kind of sticks out in an odd way. It's still a bit on the small side, especially if you end up comparing this with the official Super Saiyan 4 figure, which I, I have to give them some leeway in this one. I think this one actually released before the Super Saiyan 4 figure, which we now have on screen here, actually released proper, so they didn't have anything to immediately refer to or I should say possibly knock off in that case. Uh, as we bring in things a little bit closer, you can kind of really see the difference in terms of the muscle bulk, especially in the upper body here, compared to both the Kong version and the Demon Echo Fit version, where it's worth also mentioning that the Demon Echo Fit one is also much softer in terms of the general upper body uh, sculpting in this case, which is a little more noticeable, especially around the middle of the pectorals here, where it's a little more dug in. Uh, now that we have a proper side to side, we can also see it just overall, the proportions on the upper body are a bit smaller in the Demonic Outfit. They're not necessarily bad, they're just uh, not as robust, I would put it politely. Uh, in terms of the tail motion, you can kind of see in this case, unfortunately, the 
the demoniacal fit figure is also a lot more limited as uh, both the official figure of uh, Goku here as well as the Kong version have a little more of a pronounced uh, tail motion namely there's actually like a bulge joint that plugs into the back so you have a little more range of movement while in terms of the demoniacal fit one unfortunately that one is strictly just plug in and that's it you can have it at a 360 degree angle but that's about it you don't really have anything else to work with which is unfortunately a bit disappointing especially with how the tail at least on mine seems to pop out all the time because it's not held in particularly well uh, moving on to the other accessories though Vegito here comes with a few different heads on this case which as you can see is a more stern expression uh, grimacing growling expression however you want to call it and then of course a yelling one which has the alternative set of bangs uh, much like the official Vegeta blue release the bangs can be swapped in and out between the various different faces so basically they pick or choose whichever one you want it functions as well as in each case but actually let's say a bit of criticism much like the official release the bangs themselves are a bit on the loose side so uh, just be warned on that one you're gonna have to a little push them a little harder to keep them in place in terms of the hands that this figure come in come with I would have to say there's what about what you would expect these are basically copied straight from the Vegeta blue figure for the most part uh, which includes the fact that one of the hands you'll be seeing a little bit also has a hold in the middle there which is supposed to kind of connect to an effect bit that comes with the original Vegeta blue release but doesn't appear on this particular one because they didn't make it and that would be the energy ball effect with the electrical charges on it this figure doesn't come with that so they kind of assume that you actually have that figure as released there there's that hand for example there they assume you have the original official toy to go with this one but on its own it's kind of useless if you have to be honest uh, moving on there is a slight addition of in this case we have an energy blade on there it's actually a nice translucent color actually looks very pleasant and I will also add fits with the official Vegeta blue figure and then we have this much wider swiping arc one that effectively in terms of appearance it actually looks really well it actually looks really impressive I would say but in terms of actual practicality I'd have to warn you this that particular thing needs its own stand it will definitely not hold up on its own by any means it's just much too heavy to get it to stick around in a convincing fashion uh, speaking of which proof of concept here's me putting the original energy blade the, the kind of smaller one that appears with a lot of other figures uh, a little more of a standard size one it'll hold up just fine and as we move around to this one I had to pose this one incredibly carefully to get on there because due to the weight of this particular effect that the arm kept sinking down as you might be able to figure from the way I've been speaking up to this point unfortunately I am not going to make a recommendation for either this or the Kong Studio version of the character as frankly speaking both have too many quality control issues and to make a proper recommendation of either one of them if anything if you really want a version of this as a Super Saiyan 4 look for a sale version of that and make sure that you are prepared to do some fixing up on either figure because frankly they both got issues they're not impossible to fix but you're going to need to spend some time hopefully this has been of some use to some of you out there take care catch you later